Hello, it's about time for it's about time for our next presenter, which uh, just by accident, I'm both moderator and presenter. My name is uh, Ciprian Samuel. I'm representing um, Green Map Association in Romania, and we also represent uh, the Green Map Global Movement and the organization in uh, New York. And uh, we have uh, one global movement towards mapping sustainable development resources for um, a better way of life. And uh, we are mainly not concentrating of um, mapping resources for tourists, but for the local communities. And the power of this global movement are uh, the variety of people that work, the variety of uh, organization types, from individuals to organizations, small organizations, non-profit organizations, up to government and another kind of large institutes. What we have in common is um, a goal of, um, uh, let's say, thinking globally, but map locally resources um, in a certain way, and we focus on three main themes, and uh, one of them is uh, sustainable living, uh, with uh, resources to green economy, mobility, and then technology, and design hazards and challenges. And then we have cultural theme with uh, resources uh, related to cultural character. And then we have the third, which includes uh, resources re uh, regarding nature and outdoor activities in nature. And we have over 120 icons that we map. And all of them are from a few years ago. They are all open and they can be used on any projects in any way you like. And we had uh, big challenges how to handle uh, the amount of uh, projects which uh, goes over 1,000 projects at a global level with uh, as many teams as projects and then thousands or tens of thousands of people that got involved globally in the last 24 years uh, and the project started somewhere in New York during a, a World UN conference uh, somewhere in 1992 or uh, so regarding the sustainable, sustainable development. Um, we have developed inside the uh, movement uh, a large variety of um, tools and resources useful for mapping sustainable living resources, starting from, let's say, you know, the classical printed maps, which went on for quite some time, but now uh, it seems that every one of us wants to move uh, online, both online and offline, but in using uh, mobile applications. And that is a big challenge, especially when you have so many people using the same platform at the same time and the same understanding. And of course, we came up with a lot of let's, uh, products or resources like um, uh, brochures and uh, printed maps and uh, atlases, of, uh, global atlases of green maps over the world. And uh, a large amount of uh, people got involved. Uh, and this is just, let's say, the core people uh, steering uh, the global movement. And um, we kind of uh, attached to this global movement any type of project that we uh, could use, including European projects like um, the Grudwig uh, Initiative, I think you may have heard of it, some education project financed in the EU, and we partnered with different uh, organizations around Europe. And uh, as you can see, that um, we, we bring gris, um, uh, green sites on the same map uh, using hundreds of projects worldwide and we need to manage them in a way that we all figure out what they mean, um, not depending on the language that we speak and the words that we write in the description uh, forms. So we've been using a platform for over 10 years based on Drupal, 
I think many of you uh, have heard of it. And uh, we realized we can't really keep up the pace um, with the platform. It needs so much uh, resources to just to keep it up to date and uh, quite a team to develop um, functions or features that we need for such a large project. So uh, at some point, like five years ago, we started looking at different resources of moving uh, the thousands or the hundreds of thousands of points that we have gathered so far uh, into different platforms. And we realized, and we took one by one, uh, we took the Carto TB, now Carto, and then we had the story maps. Now I think it's uh, ArcGIS story maps or ArcGIS online environment. And then we had the Google My Maps, Google Earth, and different other smaller projects like Map of Tomorrow somewhere in Germany. And they were, they all had, let's say, uh, up and downs, and we realized none of them is our uh, answer to the problem. So we went on, went on, and we said, okay, let's start using some open source resources. We find a brilliant mind to put it all together and bring hundreds or as many projects as you like. You attach them to a team, and the team can have roles and as many users as you like, but all resources go in the same platform so you can see the global movement towards sustainability. And we put up this uh, application that works on mobile right now. It's under, the, it's under test. And uh, then we had a screenshot over uh, New York. And of course, we decided to take no more fees under the green map system. Uh, you can use our green map icons in different ways with uh, all kinds of open licenses. But what we have in common is within global, we are so many uh, different in uh, culture and uh, ways of looking at the sustainable uh, way of uh, living. So I would like to walk you through um, uh, a demo about the what, let me check the time. And how many? I have uh, five minutes? No, maybe less. I have two minutes less. Okay. Oh, this is nice. How do I. Okay. Here's what we do we have like some uh, 40,000 resources right now on the map. They need to be clustered somehow so you can um, easily display all of them. I can quickly go at the local zoom level, so we are here, and I put up two resources, for instance, and we have, um, let's check out this, uh, one of the resources you found here, this is a museum that I put up last night while being at the, um, uh, this uh, gala dinner that we had last night. And uh, I'm not sure that you all uh, figure out that we have a museum inside that great huge building. And it's a museum about the folk costumes in Romania. So I tried to put that on the map because it's one of the interests in uh, green mapping. And we put uh, a couple of pictures. This is one that done by Mamie last night. It goes with a map. And then we have also a description and we attach to it different icons, like uh, this is a living uh, spot, and then this is a cultural site or art spot. It's senior friendly, and it's also government office. And of course, we ha it has a public restroom. But anyway, we can manage. We have one minute to go. And as I said, we can uh, manage for so many people in the project we can manage lots of maps. There are eight, over 800 maps in here, and we have map profiles, and then we can manage the sites, and there are hundreds of, uh, sorry, tens of thousands of sites with pictures and title and descriptions and as many attributes as we like. And then we have teams, different teams. I'm an admin to this, so I can see a lot of the data, but usually uh, if one opens a map or maybe 10, they can see only their maps. And we have different icon sets. Uh, we can put custom ones from green map icons to sustainable development, the SDGs icons, some other custom um, icons. So I'm done with my presentation, so I'm ready to take questions uh, from you.
All right, I'm not sure. Is, do I have longer or? I think I have 10 more minutes. Why, why was I on the rush? So I can show you more of the application. I mixed up with time. Someone keep a, an eye on the watch for me, on the clock, right? Uh, the resolution is pretty high here, so let me show you how we can contribute a new site. Let's say I'm, um, let me go right on the main uh, map view, and let's say, let me put this, uh, okay, let's see if there is any GPS on here, but maybe it's not. Let me go on the zoom, so I'm located somewhere here and I want to contribute with the place. So let's think together of uh, something that describes the place we are, we are in. So I'm going to go under contribute and add a new site. And um, I can zoom in, see where I am. So, so this is our hotel maybe, I'm not sure. This is a park, okay, let's put this park for instance. There is a park here just nearby across the university and say, so, okay, I want to put it in. And as you can see that on uh, most of the maps, if you've seen, uh, if you look at the green spaces on a general map, well, what do you usually see on that kind of um, map? It's just, let's say, a green polygon, uh, the name of the green space, a park or a garden, or something like that. But apart from that, do you see any other symbols or the features or the functions of that green space? I can tell you, at least in Romania, and I think you saw on this one, you say a green polygon and a name. It says a square or something. It doesn't say what you can do in the space. You can think of so many things to do, but it doesn't say it. And for, I'll take it, uh, I'll say, okay, this is a park, and okay. But actually, it's not a park, it's just a square, and I put square. A park in Romania, it means it has at least one hectare, just to call it a park and I can confirm it, and then I have to put on which project or map do you want to put it. And there is one that I have already opened, it's called Green Map of Bucharest. And I have a description, and I can type something in and confirm it. Uh, this works on mobile even better than on desktop, so I can add some pictures of the site. Of course, I don't have any pictures right now of the place, but I can continue with what I am interested in mostly, it's the selecting one of the icons that describes the place. And I say from cultural character, I just choose a child-friendly site. Because it's friendly for uh, kids, that you can take them there, and then in a safe space, they can play with, uh, I don't know what they like in the place. But it's also senior-friendly because it's, it has a shade, so seniors can go in the shade and talk and play, well, talk with other seniors or younger people. But it's also going under nature. I can also select a different icon regarding outdoor activities. And I'll say, okay, this is a public space or square, and you can play with, uh, let's say, with skateboard, or this is a recreation area because it has trees and people around them. So I collected all the features of that place, uh, and they asked me if I want to add any attributes to the place. Some, we have the um, choice of adding value to the place, not just some options. For a child-friendly site, I just say, okay, this is child-friendly, but we can add any custom attributes that we like. And I just click on submit, and then it's done. It's already online, so people will see this as a place where they can take the kids and play around the place. So we can do the same for, just imagine, this is a platform for, now I can look at the clock. So now I do have, how long? Five minutes? Something like that. Uh, just imagine, this is a platform where you can find the nearest bike repair shop. Because you have a bike that's broken, then I need to find a quick way or close by repair shop. But you can also find places for, let's say, where do I take my kids to play around, but in a safe place. And I, we've got icons just for that. Uh, how, um, where do I 
let's say I'm a young family, I have two small kids, one for kindergarten and one for school, and I want to move to a new neighborhood. How can I, what tool do I find so can I take a decision where to just move my family? Usually people buy the home first or rent the home first and then they look around what they have nearby. But that's the wrong way of doing it. Uh, we, need, we have Green Map helping that kind of task where you say, okay, I have this kindergarten, I have, this is the school, this is the playground, this is the farmer's market, this is a repair shop or some diff different other resources that I need. Let's say for cultural character, I have a theater nearby, a cinema or um, a large green space. And I say, okay, these are all the resources uh, just gathered in this area, okay, I should be looking for a place to stay in that area. And that gives value and um, it gives a sustainable way of living. I'm just not going to move in a cheap place if all my important resources are far away because, because that drives me to take decisions like I need to buy a car so I can get from point A to point B. And this is really hard to do that in so many cases. Uh, we, we also have resources for a uh, green economy. We want to take the pulse of um, the local businesses. How do they develop? Do we even have local businesses around us? Because so much of what we have around has become so imported from different uh, places. Uh, we have also resources for naturalists. For instance, I have a young family as well, I'm going back to the same case, but I'm also a biologist. I want, I want to stay in a place where I have green spaces, but not the one that has just turf. I want to see something with natural vegetation, and then where I can see an insect watching site, a bird watching site, I, I can uh, find amphibians, uh, I can find, um, let's say, uh, birds. Uh, migratory birds and in Bucharest we have these large rivers that cross by Bucharest and having a place nearby you can see things that otherwise you should take a trip just to see those let's say pelicans, storks or other um, stuff like that and in Bucharest we have also a natural park which is one of the fewest in Europe we have a park just uh, near your quarters a natural park a big one actually um, let me think of another, um, let's say, resource that is useful. Um, if I'm going here in Manage Icons, I can show you some of them. Let's look at uh, View Icons, and we have so many here. Oh, here, this is eco agricultural or permaculture. This is a fair trade icon, healthy dining, repair shops. Wow, we have social services. For instance, you are in a community and then you need, let's say, you have families or individuals that need uh, social help, like where do I get a free medicine? Where do I get free medical care? Where do I get, and there are plenty of people that are not uh, insured, so they need help. Especially in Bucharest, there are so many, let's say, uh, social places, uh, places they can get free food, especially near churches. Um, not all not all people know about that, so we put those uh, on the um, on the map as well. Or oh, eco tourism resources. How where do you rent things? Local food recycling, etc. And this is just one of them. Let me go to nature, and we have icons like that, like wetlands, drinking water source, waterfront park, uh, or geological features, landscaping, eco design. Shaded Boulevard, just imagine that how important is a shaded boulevard for seniors or even for, in cities we have this uh, heat island, heat uh, islands and uh, shaded boulevards, they just uh, give you a way of um, exiting your home during uh, this uh, sweltering hot and then you just go on a shaded boulevard which sometimes it has uh, benches and seniors can stay around or they can uh, play with kids or kids play with bikes or some other types of activities. And for 
nature, let me see, a culture and society. This somehow overlaps with the, the interests of tourists, but it, I can tell you for certain, especially in Bucharest, I can um, interview people on, uh, in the streets and they won't point me, they won't know whole uh, historical monuments in the city or they won't know even hidden sites. They, well, we know about the largest museums, but you'll never know, for instance, that we have about 30 or 40 museums. We have uh, at least uh, 25 theaters. Some, most of the people will say, okay, we have a couple, and they will name three or four of them, but not all of them. We have on the map all kindergartens, all, all education resources that we need, private and public. And we have uh, eco club organizations, food banks, social services, and all kinds of volunteer sites. So I'm uh, available to take your questions now. Dai to microfon, te rog. Hello. Um, Hi. Do you have an API, or, for example, uh, is it possible to use the Open Green Map as a base map on other? We things? are working on it, and uh, I will have my colleague Bogdan just in front of you that uh, will um, tell you even uh, uh, in a more exact way how we plan to do that. And of course, we um, we looking at ways of. Um, uh, serving not even the API, but even the, um, let's say, the green sites, lines, polygons, whatever we uh, gather in um, some kind of open license. We're still thinking of it because here we involved hundreds of people and there are so many views in each of them, uh, but we plan to open it to everyone, uh, use it in any way they fit. And of course, uh, easily serving it as an API or as a map base map somewhere. We actually have, a, at least in our application, we have ways of adding base maps, um, custom base maps for our maps as well. Of course, we chose the open street map because it's the easiest to get, um, but we're looking at ways of bringing anything, even custom base maps, one that you did in your office or some organi local organ organization. So when you work in an area, you'll always have uh, an accurate base map of, of, of what you need. It may be uh, aerial imagery, but also some topographical maps, etc. Do you have more questions for me? I can think of one question that you would ask me. Is it free? Yes, it's free to use Open Green Map. Um, is it useful? Well, I think it is. I've been working on it for almost 20 years and I'm still on it because I, I find that all these resources are useful in uh, our daily life. And there's no, way, there's no other way of finding these kind of resources without digging alone for them. There is no, not even a governmental office that would tell you where all educational in, uh, organizations are placed around the city. Not mentioning the private ones, that's even maybe taboo. All right, we have a free time now then.